Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK uh, to do this video. And recently I've been getting a lot of requests, so I'm probably popping up on your screen quite often if you've subscribed. So sorry about that, but I do like to do what I can when I can. So um, this one is to answer that gentleman who wanted me to talk about pensions. I'm not quite sure what aspect of pensions he wanted me to talk about, but basically at the moment, um, as of 2019, um, it's going up to 66 years old, and then um, it's going to increase to 67 between 2026 and 2028. That's at the moment. Um, the, um, in order to get the maximum um, pension, you have to have been paying in 35 years. At one point it was about 30 years, but they bumped it up to about 35 now. So you have to be paying in it longer in order to qualify for it. So if you've been paying, say, for 20 years, you get pro rata. So if, for, if you paid in for 35 years you get the full whack which translates into about 164 pound something a week um, I think it works out to 600 and something a month so pro rata I wrote it down suppose you've been paying it in you've only got 20 years um, that you've been paying it in um, you've got 20 qualifying years on your national insurance record after the 6th of April 2016 um, you would divide 164 pound 35 by 35 and then multiply that for 20 years to get the pro rata amount which translates into £93.91 so that's what you'd be expecting if you paid £20 if you paid in for 20 years um, if you have paid into a national health scheme somehow and you've overstayed you're an overstay and it's only I mean when you think about this overstaying thing it's a recent phenomenon it hasn't been in the headlines are a big thing until the hostile environment policy. Before that, everybody was working, doing their own thing. I mean, you know, they reckon you're legal to work as a contractor. And I think that still applies even now as an overstayer. But, you know, all of a sudden, they've just crashed everything. So up until this, up until the hostile environment policy, people were working, living their lives, doing whatever. And now all of a sudden they're walking around like bloody criminals. Anyway, what's happened now is if you've paid it in because it's contribution based, that means that you are eligible to get it, but you're going to have to undergo that habitual residence test or the ordinary um, the ordinary residence test. Yeah, to prove whether or not you're eligible um, to live in the UK or that you're actually living in here. So what does that say? If you have to prove that in order to get it, it's 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 not right. I mean, they, they, they shouldn't be able to stop you from getting something you've been paying into. You should really, if they've made that mistake, that's their hard luck, as far as I can see. Anyway, I might be wrong here. Um, if I were you, I'd go to a Citizens Advice Bureau and ask them about your rights with regard to your um, pensions, um, if you are an overstayer and you want to know and you have been paying in for years and years and years. And so just to get that sorted to make sure that if you uh, that you are entitled because there are some non contribution based that you're definitely not entitled to. But the ones you've actually contributed to, you are entitled to. And if they put in this little thing in afterwards, that's not that's not your fault. So I don't know how that one works. I'm sorry. Um, so, if, yeah, so I would contact the Citizen Advice Bureau to see if they can help you. They, I didn't know this, but they also can help you or at least direct you in if you want to return to your home country. I'm not quite sure what they do, but that's an interesting um, piece of information, I thought. The Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants, um, they're also very useful um, to speak to, but the only thing is, is that their telephone lines are so expensive. They range from 3p to 45p a minute, depending on how long you um, are on the line to them. But if you're phoning from a landline, it's 12p a minute all the way through. 
um, but you can get them on their website. So that is the Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants. If you have any concerns like with regard to your pension that you've been paying in, I'm sure they'll be able to direct you and guide you. Um, everything's confidential with them, so you don't have to worry. And the definition of an overstay... The definition of an overstayer is like students who've overstayed, they came here on a student visa and then they didn't go back. It's the um, people who got married and they, well, they're not actually overstayers, they're undocumented. So they've got overstayers, undocumented, they've got all different definitions for different things. So undocumented would mean that you got married, the marriage didn't work out, you didn't be reported to the home office and you didn't go back after the marriage failed. So you'd be undocumented. So you'd fall under this category. And the tourists, the tourists, the people who come here on a visitor's visa and think, oh, yeah, I like England. I ain't going back. That kind of person. So all of you, you're all either overstayers or undocumented or out of status, whatever it is, just so you know where you stand in this. I mean, you could also be out of status if you didn't um, renew your visa within one minute is 28 days, but I think now it's dropped down to 14 days. So if you didn't renew your visa within 14 days, you could have been out of status for that time, unless you have a very, very good reason. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. I'm supposed to be keeping these short and sweet. So ciao for now.